About two years ago, I briefly talked about this device in another video, the Harley Benton Airborne Pro 5.8 GHz wireless system. In that video, the box was still sealed as the topic wasn't even the wireless system itself. It was more or less serving as a general example. Since then, I've had plenty of opportunities to thoroughly test this device in all kinds of different environments, from simple studio setups all the way to big stages and venues with over 10,000 people. So let's talk about whether this wireless system System delivers on its promises, whether it deserves the name Pro and if you should actually spend your money on it. When it comes to wireless guitar systems, I think it's safe to say that going digital is the only real solution these days. This leaves us with two options. 2.4 GHz and 5.8 GHz. The most common systems use the 2.4 GHz frequency, like my X Vive U4 for my in-ears, the Line 6 system I've been using for many years, and countless other systems you see at all sorts of concerts. 2.4 isn't generally bad, but it happens more and more, at least in my experience, that you run into trouble even in smaller venues. The reason for this is that the 2.4 GHz frequencies are open for anyone and are especially used for Wi-Fi signals, so depending on the venue you're playing at, you might encounter a bunch of devices on and off stage or even in the next building that occupy the exact frequency your wireless guitar system wants to use, leading to an unstable connection and dropouts in your your signal. That's why it's always a good idea to check the stability of the connection and maybe switch to a different channel before the show until you find an unoccupied frequency. One solution to that problem is to use the 5.8 GHz band where you won't have these dropout problems as much simply because it's not as overused or overcrowded as the 2.4 GHz band. 5.8 GHz also has less reach meaning devices in another room are less likely to occupy your stage space but your system still has enough range to perform properly on regular stages. The downside is that there are currently not many 5.8 GHz guitar systems out there that I would consider affordable. For example, the Shure system that can switch between 2.4 and 5.8 GHz is amazing and really reliable, but costs almost 600 bucks. Naturally, I got very curious about the Harley Benton Airborne Pro for just under 100 euros, which I believe is the only affordable 5.8 GHz wireless system on the market as of making this video. The receiver unit it comes with a built-in tuner, which is a nice touch, and it works quite accurately. It also serves as a charging device for the transmitter, which snaps into place via magnets, which is quite convenient. So, in theory, this device is pretty impressive and features some clever design ideas, which I very much appreciate, especially for that price. It features four different channels that seem to seamlessly switch automatically in case of an unstable connection on one channel, which is a great feature and leaves you with one less thing to worry about on stage. In practice though, my experience with the Airborne Pro was not only a bit underwhelming, but actually intensely frustrating at times. First and foremost, I found the charging method to be highly unreliable. There have been several instances where I've charged the transmitter overnight only to find it to be out of battery right before a show the next day. After thorough testing, it seems to just charge randomly. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, even after many days of testing where I completely emptied out the battery and tried out different charging protocols, I can't quite pinpoint what causes the system to sometimes charge or not. It really seems to be absolutely random when it works and there's no way to tell during the charging process if it's actually working or not. Charging the transmitter unit through the micro USB port works of course, so this became my preferred method of charging the battery before shows after the first time I walked on stage with a dead transmitter. But that totally defeats the whole magnet charging receiver thing and come on, micro USB, it's 2024. I don't understand why companies still use micro USB ports in their devices that break after 10 uses instead of a solid USB-C. Another major issue is the lack of lock mode for the buttons. I accidentally turned it off while playing live, which needless to say was extremely frustrating. This guitar bug design is probably a matter of taste. I really don't like it since it dangles around underneath the guitar and at least to my eyes it looks just weird. That's what the video from two years ago was about by the way, to show a workaround for this. 
When it comes to signal stability, I must say that it performed very well on all shows that I played with it, from small clubs with 200 people all the way to big festivals with more than 10,000 people and an insane amount of tech and Wi-Fi devices on and off stage. In my studio though, which is far away from any other houses, I experienced random signal dropouts, which makes no sense to me at all and I couldn't replicate the issue to figure out what caused it, since it happened only two or three times in two years. But when it happened, these dropouts were severe, not only a bit of stuttering in the signal, but flat out silence for multiple seconds. So I really can't tell if I was just lucky during all these live shows where it worked fine, but this definitely killed my confidence to take it on any shows and rely on it anymore. One side note here is that only four channels might not be enough if you consider that you might have to switch to a different channel in case of interference. If you have, for example, two guitars and a bass in the band and they all are using the same system, this will leave you only one free line as a backup for all three musicians. Two free channels should be the minimum if you ask me. The internal battery is another downside. It can't be replaced, so if it dies, you're out of luck, which is especially problematic during live performances. Ideally, there should be a replaceable battery or at least individually purchasable transmitter units as backups. Sound quality is also a big issue. The system changes the sound of the guitar significantly. The sound gets noticeably softer and muddier. While you can fix this by adjusting the gain and treble on your amp, it's an issue that simply shouldn't occur in a digital wireless system. In a live scenario, I always keep a long guitar cable close by as an emergency solution in case the wireless fails mid-set or mid-song, because it's sometimes quicker to just pull out the wireless, switch to a cable and continue playing, instead of searching for the issue and trying to fix it at the expense of precious time on stage. But when the sound is so vastly different from wireless to cable, and requires additional tweaking on your amp settings, not to mention how happy you will make the front of house about that, it makes this solution impossible to use. I really don't want to shit on Harley Benton, since I think it's a generally very good brand. I play a lot of their gear and constantly recommend their amazing guitars, basses, cabinets and whatnot. But this Airborne Pro, in my opinion, not only shouldn't have the word Pro in its name to begin with, but in its current state, I absolutely can't recommend buying it not for casual use in your living room or rehearsal space, and definitely not for live performances. It has a lot of potential and I very much appreciate the innovation Harley Benton tries to deliver here. So I do hope Harley Benton will address these issues I mentioned and releases a Mark II version in the future, which maybe then will truly deserve to have the name Pro in it. But that's gonna be it from me. A big thanks to all these people over here for supporting the channel. If you're interested in hours and hours of exclusive bonus content like outtakes, behind the scenes footage, making offs, lessons and monthly live streams, click here and consider becoming a patron. If you want to see another video here on YouTube, check out this one which YouTube thinks would be the most interesting for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.